Welcome to lesson number three. In our class on Leviticus 23, the feasts of Leviticus 23, understanding them prophetically and messianically. Today's lesson will be on first fruits, picture of Israel and Messiah in prophecy. So we'll focus in on the Feast of First Fruits. We are told about First Fruits in Leviticus 23 and verses 9 through 14. And First Fruits speaks of resurrection. The verses say this And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you shall be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof. Then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And ye shall offer that day when you wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two-tenth deals of fine flour, mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an inn. And you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the selfsame day that you have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever, throughout your generations, in all your dwellings. Now, and again, we always need to bring this to the forefront of our thinking and our understanding of Leviticus 23 in these feasts and what they typify. These are for Israel. Speak on to the children of Israel. They are not prophetically speaking of the church. Prophetically, first fruits speaks of a resurrection for Israel. It speaks of the promise of resurrection for the righteous of Israel, and ultimately, their dwelling in the land is God's covenant people and enjoying its fruits. Joshua 5, 1 through 12 pictures this. Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 10 speaks of this. Ezekiel 37 speaks of that resurrection time that's coming. All of these and other scriptures would speak of this. Joshua 5, 1 through 12, for example, foreshadows the day when Israel is resurrected, as it were, as a nation and dwells in the land of Israel. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Unto whom the Lord sware that he would not show them the land, which the Lord swore unto their fathers that he would give us a land that flows with milk and honey and their children whom he raised up in their stead. Them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. This portion of scripture tells us that God would not allow many to go into the promised land. They died in the desert because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. And those that went into the promised land, they were circumcised. Now, this is an actual historical event. But it typifies, pictures, what God will do for the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, 
in the last days. It's what first fruits speaks about. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 in verses 2 and 3, we are told, and shall return unto the Lord thy God. That's the Jewish people that is the focus here, Israel. That they shall return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all your heart, with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations worldwide captivity whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. Juxtaposition this with what we read in Joshua 5. Those who did not obey the law, Lord died in the wilderness. Those who did obey the Lord went into the promised land. Here in the last days, those who obey the Lord and their children, ultimately, we are told, God will bring into the land. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 8, tells us this. And this is from worldwide captivity. This is what Moses was speaking about in Deuteronomy 30. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So verse 7, Ezekiel prophesies, As I was commanded, he says, and As I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. The bones represent the nation of Israel. In the context, coming back from worldwide captivity to the land. Ultimately, verse 8, Ezekiel sees the sinews and the flesh and the skin covering those bones. They're living as a nation among the nations of the world, but in unbelief initially. Subsequent to that, sometime after that, there will be breath in them, but at this point, no breath in them. This is speaking of the resurrection, as it were, the bones living again of the nation of Israel in the end days. We're living in that time. That's, that's an exciting concept in and of itself. So prophetically, it speaks of the resurrection of Israel and ultimately going into the land. Messianic, it speaks of Jesus as the down payment for all resurrections to come. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 through 23. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, Messiah, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept, those that have died. Christ Jesus is the first fruits. He's risen from the dead. The first fruits are, are the down payment, as it were, that there's a greater harvest to come. Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection. 
the first to resurrect from the dead. Then we are told, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ and Jesus shall all be made alive. But notice verse 23, but every man in his own order. Christ, Jesus, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Messianically, first fruits speaks of what Jesus has done in resurrecting from the dead. He is the assurance. He is the down payment that there will be a greater resurrection in the future at his coming. But notice, every man in his own order. But Christ is the first fruits. Messiah is the first fruits. In the first century, Jesus was the first fruits. Christ, the first fruits. Before the tribulation period, there will be resurrected church age saints. That's the rapture. And the rapture is prior to the tribulation. So, in every man in his own order, Jesus was first resurrected. He is the uh, guarantor, the promise, the down payment, if you will, that there'll be a greater resurrection. But every man in his own order, at his coming, Jesus first comes prior to the tribulation period, and church age saints will meet him in the sky. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. In Christ, that's people in this church age. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. First the dead, and then we which are alive, the entire body of Christ, what we call the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, we are resurrected prior to the tribulation period. At the end of the tribulation period, Revelation 20, verse 6, we have resurrected Old Testament saints and resurrected martyred tribulation saints. Every man in his own order. At the end of the tribulation, these saints are resurrected. Finally, or not finally, but fourth, during the millennium, or perhaps after the millennium, millennium saints. See, we are not clearly told when those who become believers within that thousand-year kingdom ultimately will get their resurrected body. Will it be during the millennium? Will it be after the millennium? Revelation 20, verse 5 says, But the rest of the dead live not again, until the thousand years were finished, this is the first resurrection. Now, the first resurrection is for the saved. Remember, every man in his own order. The second resurrection is for the lost at the end of the thousand years. But the first resurrection is in stages. Christ the first fruits. Then the pre-tribulation resurrection, rapture of the church, saints, dead and living. Then at the end of the tribulation period, we have the Old Testament saints, and we have the martyred tribulation saints. That's the first resurrection, as well as the millennium saints, who ultimately will be resurrected, will get a new body. At the end of the millennium, Revelation 20, 11 through 15, the unsaved are resurrected, not to eternal life, but to judgment and eternal damnation. So prophetically, first fruits speaks of the promise of resurrection for the righteous of Israel, and ultimately, the nation going into the land. 
dwelling in the land as God's covenant people and enjoying its fruits. It's the promise of Joshua and Deuteronomy and Ezekiel and others. And again, Joshua is the picture. Those who didn't obey died in the desert. Those who obeyed and were circumcised went into the land. In Deuteronomy 30, from worldwide captivity, the Jews who obey call upon the name of the Lord. They will as well be circumcised. But we are told in Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, they are circumcised in their heart, born again, saved as they call upon the name of the Lord, and they, as a nation, go into the millennial kingdom and dwell in the land. Messianically, it speaks of Jesus as the down payment for all resurrections to come. Christ, Messiah, the first fruits. First fruits, again, prophetically, from Leviticus 23, speaks of Israel's promised resurrection. If they would have accepted Jesus in the first century, Israel would have been established as the nation. But they didn't, as prophesied. Next lesson, we're going to look at a very misunderstood feast. Pentecost, or Shavuot. And what we are to learn from that as we continue our study in Leviticus 23. Until then, Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>